Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Lupo, and we are going to do something a little different from my channel. Normally, I do how-to videos and educational videos, and this, I guess, is an educational video because I'm going to show you this interview that we did over 25 years ago with my grandfather, um, and he talks about what it was like to grow up in devastating poverty, um, in the Dust Bowl of Oklahoma right before the Depression and during the Depression. So, in a way, it's a historical piece. I, I um, To be honest, I had a hard time because I love my grandpa so much, and I have not watched this since he, he passed away. It was pretty, actually, uh, tough to watch, in a way, because I miss him so much. But it was also fun to hear him laugh and tell stories. I am going to do this series because... Fortunately, my uh, family was had enough insight to sit down, pull the grandsons together and, uh, and my dad to interview him and ask questions. And we went through uh, all these questions in his life. And, and in times, uh, my grandpa was tough to get to talk. So at a lot of times, it's going to sound like we're just peppering him with questions because it was tough to get him to, to emote. And, uh, you know, it was also 25 years ago. I, I'm like, um, I'm like a little kid in it practically. I think I'm 19 during this or 20. I've got like a buzz cut. You'll see, you'll see me in there. You'll see my brothers and stuff. And, um, it, it's, it was a trip to see, uh, it's like from a different time to watch that forward. But anyway, I'm going to get to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this in stages. Um, I have integrated all the old photos I could find and tried to match them up with who he's talking about. Now, what happened is he had these photo albums and somehow, I don't know, the photos aren't in the albums anymore and, and they were misplaced and disorganized. And it took me a very long time to figure out who the people were in these pictures. Like, I would find one picture with their names and I'd have to, like, you know, use that information to try to extrapolate from the other pictures. I put a lot of time into trying to figure this out, but I'm not sure if it's 100% perfect. The other reason I put this up is because I wanted to reach out as, as a historical piece. Someone's going to be watching this, maybe, I don't know, one of my brother's great, great, great kids or something, maybe 100 years from now, I don't know. And, uh, and I'd like to preserve this family history. See, this thing was just on a VHS cassette. You're talking about this was done in 93 so there wasn't digital video, there wasn't, you know, you couldn't just turn on your cell phone. And this was like a cassette that we had to transfer. So the quality is VHS quality. It's not the greatest, but I am super glad it even exists. But I'm sitting here thinking, you know, maybe a handful of people have ever seen this. And what good is it doing just sitting in a buried of a box before it just decays and gets thrown away? So at least I'm going to share this with the world. And if you're any good with genealogy, I have completely lost track of that side of the family our family has um i know my grandpa you know his parents had a bunch of kids and their parents had a bunch of kids and the genealogy is just pretty much lost except the last few generations and uh, if you're any good at genealogy feel free to hit us up and maybe i'll get lucky and one of our relatives will say hey that's my great 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 grandparent in that picture and um that's what i'm hoping anyway without further delay i'm going to show you the first part of the interview and this is mainly going to cover leo's childhood um and it should be i i like i said i tried to line up the pictures of what he's talking about and then i'm going to cut the interview at the end and i will put out the next one later enjoy the day after thanksgiving in 1993 uh we have tony taryn ted and pop here and me uh tom is unfortunately working his interview in later. So, uh, Pop, what we want to do here is uh, start to find out a little bit about what you remember about your childhood. So, uh, why don't you tell us uh, your first recollection that you can think of? Before that, when were you born? 27, I was born 27 August 1910. And my first recollection of my life, of course, was on the farm where I was born and reared until the age of about 12 or 13. And also might say that some of my, I, I think 
probably the happiest days of my life was on the farm. Very simple life. My mother and father grew that land in the second opening of Oklahoma. What do you mean they grew it? Grew it in a lottery. And how do you they do lottery, the statewide, the lottery, of course, the first one was a race for the settlers, and then they decided that wasn't so good, so the second part and third, they opened them up by having lotteries. And Dad won a farm, and it cost him a dollar an acre. How many acres? A uh, hundred and sixty. Wow. Well, anyway, that's, uh, they, mother and father, moved there. They dug a cellar, and they lived in it for the first year. And from then on, they started building on the farm. And that's where I was born. What were their names? My mother was Donna. My dad was Charlie. What was your mother's maiden name? Uh, Jeffries. How many brothers and sisters did she have? My mother had uh, two brothers and a sister. My dad had, uh, there was ten in the family, I don't know. Where were they from? Ten. <laughs> they were up in Missouri and Where were, the, where were your parents from? Uh, where were your parents from originally? They came from Ohio. And then, uh, Both of them? No, mother came from Missouri, dad was from Ohio. And before that, where were their parents from? I don't know. I think they were born there. I know my dad was born in somewhere in Ohio. Were you Irish, right, Pop? Well, Irish, English. Where does that work into it? Hmm? How far back to, to find that? Well, in 1776, as far as I can go back, I had a great-great-grandfather who was a sea captain. And he uh, disappeared at sea, ship and all. That's the last I ever heard. He was probably running slaves, my guess, and they probably took over, I don't know. That's just a guess. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know how my ancestors migrated to the United States or just when. I know they, they were in New York for a while and they came to, this is my great grand, my grandparents, great grandparents. And then they ended up in Ohio, Indiana, Missouri. Now I heard some stories that there were some Indian background too, is that right? No, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done a genealogy? Yes, some. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember it all now. Do you remember, uh, in, on that genealogy, do you have the names of your aunts and uncles? Yes. Who's got a copy of that? I got a copy. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. Turn it off. Okay, hold on. Okay. Ready? Lars is from my place. Okay. Uh, Leo's going to get his book on uh, genealogy, but uh, Taryn has just asked a question. Taryn, would you repeat the question? I just asked when. I, I never heard we had any Irish in it, so I thought that we were. Well, my, uh, on my dad's side, we were English and uh, Irish. Then it's an Irish name, right? No, it's a British name. Stedman? I think it's a British name. Thought, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was Canadian. Huh? <laughs> no. So what do you I got thought, there, Leo? Uh, my first uh, thing I can find in my family was Samuel Stedman. He was a sea captain in 1777. And he was married to Patricia Randall in 1786. And that's he was the U.S. I'm sorry. Huh? These people were living in the United States at the time? No, he was a sea captain running from England to so the United States. Okay. His ship disappeared. Nobody knows. There's no record that we can find. Why do you suspect he was running slaves? Is that just a guess? or? Oh, I was just <laughs> a guess or a joke. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, 
he had, uh, they had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve children. Wow. <laughs> they were very active. Hey, <laughs> at least he, got, he wasn't at sea all the time, Leo. <laughs> he does things to you. And, uh, <laughs> And from then on, we went down to my my grandfather was Samuel A. Stedman. Samuel A. He was married to Edith Humphrey. In 1834, he was born. And is this all happening in England, or is this, uh, they're all being born in England, or are they in America yet? Yeah, they're all in America now. When did they first come here? You don't know that? I don't know that. And then my grandfather had, uh, and grandmother, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve children. And my father was Charles A. Stedman. Now, I knew him. I met him. Yeah. Where'd you meet him, Dad? Well, when I first met uh, Pat and Leo and Doris, uh, Charlie was living with him. I saw a picture of him, didn't I, one time? I don't know. There's a picture in the book. I've never seen it. Now, your father was how old when he died? Eighty-three, I think. Mm -hmm. And the mother was eighty-six. Mm -hmm. Where did they pass away from? Just old age, not, not yeah. having cancer or anything. <laughs> yeah, mother was, well, they were both very active right up to the last. Mother painted her bedroom the day before she died. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. What did she, what, just to paint it? What, huh? What was the purpose behind that? Well, she just felt good. She did <laughs> But well, uh, my father and mother had, uh, Five children. The first was a daughter, and she died of whooping cough when she was 18 months old. What was her name? Oma. Mm -hmm. O-M-A. Mm -hmm. And Carl was the oldest boy. I was the second, third child, second boy. Conan and then Dom C. They were last. They are all passed away now. I outlived them all. You tough. <laughs> but anyway, we go back to the original park room. Mother and father started on the farm. They drew, they drew that farm in a lottery, settled down, and uh, all of the first four children were all born on the farm. Would they have a midwife? Yeah. And. Uh, we, didn't have much money, but we had a lot of fun, good time. We worked, and we worked hard. Did you go to school? Oh yeah, I went to elementary school, a one-room school out on the farm. How far did you have to walk? One yes. mile. Only one mile. In the snow? In the snow? In the snow? And that was part of the things I enjoyed. I remember Mother, <coughs> it snows in Oklahoma and gets cold. And we went barefooted all the time. As far as we can, mother put shoes on us, start the school, and we'd go around to the bushes, and take off our shoes, and go on to school barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> what did the teacher say? Oh, hell, all the kids went barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> how many kids in that class? I don't know how many was in the school. We went through to the sixth grade. What was your teacher's name, do you remember? Oh, yeah. Lots One of different each year. Different I don't remember uh -huh. their names. Uh -huh. Pop, let me ask you a question. When you went, when your parents went to Oklahoma, what year was that? When I went to what? When your parents moved to Oklahoma, what year? Settled. I could find out here. Well, let me. The reason I'm asking was, were they migrating? Um, you know, in, uh, something similar to like what was done in the Grapes of Wrath with the people. For, during the Depression, I guess. Oh no, it was way before. Way before well, the Grapes of Wrath is when everybody left Oklahoma. Well, this I'm, is this is when Leo's family came to Oklahoma. This is we're going to get to that part later. I this think is one of the openings at work out, right? Is 
that right? I think Leo's going to tell us later about why he left Oklahoma, which is right around the time of Graves' wrath. So he was 11 when they left Oklahoma. Is that what you said? He lived on the farm for 11 years, right? Hmm? You said you lived on the farm for 11 years? After 12. Good. And where'd you go then, Leo? We moved to Grandfield, Oklahoma. But I, I don't want to leave the farm just yet. Okay. No. Some of our us kids, we had a lot of cows. We milked cows, 12 to 15 cows every morning and night. So is that how the farm made us money for the milk? We didn't, we couldn't sell milk. We sold cream. We separated the milk from the cream, and the milk went to the pigs and the chickens, and we sold the cream. Well, why couldn't you sell milk? We had no life, no refrigeration, no nothing, and we were 12 miles from town. Right. And uh, we didn't have an automobile. We had a wagon. A horse <laughs> that time. Horse wagon? Uh, what do you mean by wagon? With a horse. Horse, horse strong wagon. No, they, they all pushed it. No, I just oh, wow. like, oh, I mean, like one, like dad, one old broken yeah. down something pulling in. They don't jump in when they ride my dad, taught, my dad took a couple of cows and uh, <laughs> made the yokes for them and gave them to us kids, and we drove those cows to pick up hay and go up and down all over the farm. Were the cows but, ever killed to eat? Huh? Were you guys, were the cows eat? ever eaten? Cows? Yeah. No, we didn't. We never butchered our cows because we had no refrigeration. We butchered pigs because you could uh, salt them. You could salt that down and keep them. But we raised all of our vegetables, fruit, and the only thing we bought in town, I might say, is sugar, coffee, tea, stuff like that. So the farm made its money through selling cream. That was well, we sold, we sold cattle, we sold, I mean, sold uh, pigs and turkeys and chickens and eggs and grain. And well, I, I got a couple questions to ask for yeah. these guys. When, when you were a little kid, did your mom make you eat all your food on the plate? We ate it all. We, we didn't have anything but uh, what was put there. That was it. We didn't question it. You what, what, like what, it. what happened if you didn't eat it? You just didn't eat. Okay. okay. <laughs> they didn't make you come down six days in a row? So I want to know what you think of Taryn and Ted and Tony and Tom when they used to leave that stuff on the plate that you'd make them. <laughs> well, we won't go into that. No, nah, you got to go into it. This is a time of truth, the tape song. What would you think? I never will forget the day Ted wouldn't eat and I was taking care of him. I sat him down and wouldn't give him anything else to eat for two days. <laughs> he sat there with that same food in front of him while I was taking care of him. I had one. Was he, was he stubborn? He, 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 was finally, <laughs> he finally took one bite and then I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> gross. He could never touch it again because it would scar me for life. <laughs> he had a bag of M&M's up in his room. Musica, musica, yeah. yeah. He had bags and bags of M&M's. It's a vibe. But I, we all worked on a farm. I can remember when I was a little bitty guy. I was going with mother. She would pick cotton, drag the cotton sack, and I had a had a three gallon bucket or a gallon bucket. I used to pick, and put it in the bucket, and then dump it in her cotton sack. And I was couldn't have been more than eight, seven or eight, and I was out working in the field behind a horse, driving horses. So were you the youngest, or where no. did you fall? No, I was, was the second, but I didn't have any. The others were too young, the other ones were too young. I remember one incident on the farm, I had a harrow. I don't know if you know what the harrow is, but it's a big long rake like, and you drag it over the ground after it's plowed and straighten it out. And I, had, I was driving three horses and walking behind it, and the sand and the dirt and all coming up in me, so I got real smart. So I go up. And crawled on the middle horse, and we were going fine till I got to one corner, and turned too quick, and here this about ten foot of hair started coming open. <laughs> turned upside down, and missed us. But uh, that's that's kids. We, we worked, we plowed, we chopped cotton. What'd you do for fun? Did you have radio? Well, I, well, one of the biggest funds we had a creek that run down in the back of our house, our yard. Our, farm wasn't near the house. But on a Sunday, 
my older brother and I, we'd go out and we'd get a little boat or stick or something, we'd throw in that creek. And we would follow it down about three, four miles to the old swimming pool where we met all the other nut farm boys <laughs> on Sunday and we would all strip off and spent the week, spent the day swimming. No girls allowed? They were loud. They, just, they were better. <laughs> the mothers were loud. <laughs> we didn't care, but we just that was one of the big entertainments we had. And of course, we had horses. We we were given a horse when we were very young to ride. Dad made bow and arrows, on stilts. You ever seen the Indians? We had been a lot of Indians around there, but they were all civilized and in town. Did you? What'd you get? What, how were you disciplined? Huh? How, when they had to discipline you, what did they do to you? Well, we had an old. My dad never laid a hand on me all my life. I mean, you wear shoes. But my <laughs> mother, she did the discipline. We had a big tam. What was a tamarack <laughs> bush? And there were great big long switches on it. And when we got to be punished, we had to go out, take a knife, and cut us a switch. You had to cut your own switch. And bring it back. And if it wasn't right, we went back and got another. And that was the worst part of the whole damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> she would light us up and <laughs> switch us with a switch. So you all got switched if one of you did something wrong? Well, I mean, it was that was a part it's only of group it. group effort. <laughs> The nearest my dad ever come, we were left, they were gone somewhere, and we decided we'd shear one of the horses up like a mule. <laughs> <laughs> we sheared the mane and the tail, and dad was so mad, he, boy, he got out there and he got him to, not get really got anything or not, he was coming. And we all looked so scared that he had never bothered us, that he got tickled and started laughing, and he never hit us. <laughs> But that was the only time Dad ever started trying to do discipline. Why was that? Why did she do the discipline? And I don't know. That's just the way that was part of the job. I think that runs the Lupo family. Yeah. <laughs> may, may keep and wait clean. a second. Yeah, I was tough on you guys. Yeah, you, you kept tough. your nose clean. You were tough like butter. No, Tony, you had a lot of spanks. You just don't remember them. You got you but, uh, Dad was handy at making things for us to play with and taught well, us. Did you have, did you have telephone or uh, yes, radio? Yes, we had. I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, had a lot of good memories watching him tell these stories, and he's got a lot more interesting stories. I believe I have somewhere between six to eight hours of video of this, and I'm going to release this. Uh, this is that was part one, so keep on the lookout for the other parts. Hopefully, when I finish them, I'll put them up over here. You'll just be able to click a button; it'll go right to the next part. Until then, feel free to check out my other videos. I appreciate you guys, and thanks for watching and learning about Leo. I loved him. Thank you.